What's going on everybody? I'm Fearless and today we're going over the ultimate guide on how to make perfect 808 patterns in every single beat. And whether you're a beginner, an intermediate, or a pro, keep on watching through because we got some sauce for you. Because by the end of this video, you're going to be making way better 808 patterns guaranteed. So if you guys are ready, let's jump right into it. The first thing we got to do is find the root notes of the sample that we're using. So if you already wrote your melody, you don't got to do this. You can just pretty much copy over the MIDI from your melody and use the bottom notes there, the bottom line of your melody. And those are your root notes of your 808. But if you're using a sample, we got to go and find it. So what I am going to do first is I'm going to get an 808 and start testing this with my ears. So you want to use a spins sample for this, okay? And the reason you want to use spins is because it's one of the truest 808s. It's the cleanest and the clearest. Let's go ahead and make a MIDI track with our sample right here. And we're going to try to find the first note that's played with this sample. Sounds like an E. Let's listen to it down here now. It sounds like it's right on the money to me. Now you'll notice that a lot of people do it up a couple octaves and the reason we're doing this is because you can hear the frequencies way easier. So I can hear it more than if we went down into the bassy tones of the 808, then it makes it a little bit harder to hear what note we're on and distinguish it. Let's listen to see what the rest of the bass line is doing. Okay, so we got our next note right here. It sounds like it's on G to me, but this note is actually gliding. So it's going between one or two notes, apparently. But um, I believe it's on G. Let's listen to it one more time. Goes back down to an E right here. Yeah, it sounds like it's the G sharp for me. Let's go down a couple octaves and hear it. Yeah, it feels like a lot of these notes are gliding, so this is a super hard example, but I'm glad we picked this one. It's making it tough on me, and that's good. So I'm going to stick with a G, and let's keep listening along. All right, so it looks like it pretty much stays on a G, and then it might go down a couple notes here, but we're just looking for the root notes. So now we found our root notes, at least our best guess for now. And what we're going to do is we're going to fact check ourselves to make sure what we heard was accurate. So I'm also going to go down a couple octaves now. This is probably where it would be if I was going to make the 808 pattern. And what we can do here is there's a couple ways to fact check it. You can use Ableton's converter, which we're going to do in a second here. You could also use a plugin like Scalar or Captain's Chords or any other plugin that's going to tell you the scale or the chords that are being used. And you can go ahead and find your baseline using one of those plugins. But what you can do in Ableton that's really cool is you can actually grab this and you can drag it down onto our 808 note right here. And we're going to press harmony. And what it's going to do is it's trying to guess exactly what MIDI notes are in this clip. All right. And then when it finishes up, we can go in here. And now we're going to start looking at some of these bottom notes right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and clear a bunch of this for now. And let's see what it's telling us. So it's telling us that we're going from E to F sharp to G. So good news is I think we were pretty dang close on the money. And what we're looking at is just this section because this is the full 16 bars here. E, E, F sharp, G. Okay, so maybe we needed to go down one note instead. So we were just off by one note there. But it's a really good thing that we double check so we could see that little error that we had. Now you could be saying to yourself, why don't I just do that and then go from there? Well, there's a couple reasons. The first reason is sometimes that's not 100% accurate. So you can't always rely on that. And the second reason is you always want to be training your ears because if you can hear it, that's always the best way to do it. Now, what you could also do is you could go ahead and copy this into your other MIDI track if you wanted to do that, if that's easier for you. So we're going to go into our other one and we're going to copy this directly in here so that we can see it along with our notes. Now, like I said, this isn't 100% accurate, but it's going to get it pretty dang close. So as long as everything's matching up fairly decently, you're pretty good. And remember when I said it sounded like this was going up, it was gliding from two notes from F sharp to G. 
Well, since we lined it up, you can see it's actually gliding from F sharp to G. So I was 100% right on that guess there. So what we're going to do is we're just going to copy it as if we glide. So depending on where we put our 808 at, it's either going to be a F or a G on this. We're going to match up F sharp right here to F sharp. Perfect. And then we're actually saying it's going to be an F sharp right here. So we can go ahead and keep it here. And maybe we move up to a G right around this mark right here. I'm going to legato this. I'm going to go ahead and deactivate everything. And now when we start building our 808, we have our guide notes. Now, remember when I said it wasn't 100% accurate? Check this out. We actually had it correct the first time by putting this up to G. But when we copied over the MIDI, it said that this was an F sharp. And this is what I mean by it's not 100% accurate. Because listen to what it does. It starts at an F and then the note definitely changes. Listen. That's definitely going up. Now, let's start writing this 808 pattern. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to chop out the lows here. So it's not interfering with our 808 whatsoever. And I'm just going to lay down a basic clap so that we have a rhythm here. So there's three super common patterns that I want to teach you today that you can start using. The first pattern is just following the root note all the way across. And this could be just using E all the way across and then going to G over here and going all the way across. Or technically, you could just go E the whole way. So also when you're making these, you're going to notice that a lot of times you hear this same pattern over and over again. And this is what it is right here. Right? So that's what it is. You leave a little gap right here, but it's pretty much the same all the way over. And you just copy this over the whole time. This pattern just works on everything. So this would be the first example. See, we don't have to change it to G. It would work doing this. So if we wanted to make little variations, maybe we go up to an F right here. Maybe we do the same thing at this end as well. Now, the other thing you can obviously do is just follow the root notes completely. So we could just go up to G here and we could follow this along. So that was the first pattern, just following the root note all the way across. Now, this second one is using two different notes. So you're just going to start at the root note and then you're just going to go up to a higher note. Let me show you exactly what I mean here. So right here, we're just going to go up. So maybe we go to a G like this and we're just going to copy this all the way over here. So let's delete that. Copy this over. So just using one note, the root note, and then going up to a higher note can work really well. Now, obviously, you could also go down to a lower note. For instance, if we wanted to go down to a G. Another thing you could do is you could also play with these octaves right here. So you could go like this. So that is the second most common type of pattern you're going to hear again and again. And guys, once you know these patterns and you start listening to your favorite songs, you're going to be like, oh my God, there's that pattern that we talked about. There's that pattern. You're going to hear it pop up time and time again. So the next pattern that we're going to take a look at is one of the best ones because it sounds so dang good. And what it's going to be is following the root note all the way across for the first four bars. And then from there, we're going to go down one note for the next two bars. And then we're going to go down another note from there on the last four bars or two bars, excuse me, and vice versa. Instead of going down, you could just go up and you'll have to play with this a little bit. I might go up to a G first and then down to an F sharp. Let's see how this sounds. So 
So there you go. Like I said, you can go up with it or down with it. But from my experience, going down with it works really well, especially when you're in these minor scales and these darker sort of a melody sounds that you get with a lot of trap music these days. The next thing we got to take a look at is glides. And there's a couple ways to do this in Ableton. And each way has its own benefits. Let me show you the first way. We're going to go right here in Simpler, go under controls here, and we're going to find this glide right here and we're going to turn it to glide. And then you're going to have a glide time right here. And this is going to be adjusted for your beat. So just set it somewhere around 100 and then you can always adjust it later. What that's going to allow us to do is every time a note is overlapped by another note, the overlapped note is the one that gets glide to. And what you're going to notice is if the 808 is short, for instance, this is a short spins, you're not going to be able to get it to glide towards the end of the note, right? Because it's going to fizzle out before that. So you have to do it towards the beginning. So this works really good with a longer spin. So since this note is overlapping this one, it's going to glide up to this one. And then this one starts overlapping. So it's going to glide back down to that one. Okay. So that's why I went woo woo. All right. Because it glides back down. So if we want it to start high and then go down low, we're going to cut this one back first so that we know it starts here. Otherwise, if we want it to start lower and go higher, we're gonna cut this note back first and then go like that. Versus this. That is the first way to do glides. Now, let me show you the second way. And for the second way, we're gonna click on this right here, which is note expressions. And it's crazy how this works. And this is new with Ableton 11. We're gonna click on the note and then it's gonna pop up and give you a line here. And it's actually gonna allow you to pick how many it goes up, how much it glides, how many semitones. So if we want to go up a full octave, we want to go up 12 semitones. So let's hear this. And you can pick how long it takes to glide, right? We can have it be longer or we can have it be way shorter if we bring it right back. But for this one, you can see we're only doing six semitones. So this is going to sound good if the six semitone is in our scale, which it should be. But let's say we go up seven or eight, it might be a little bit iffy. So you'll have to play around with that. What I want to do is I want to go completely down like this. But what you can do is if you hold down option or alt on Windows, you're allowed to curve it a little bit like this. So what happens if we actually curve this and maybe we even bring this in a little bit more? What is that going to sound like? It doesn't always have to be up going down. It can be going from the bottom going up. You can almost give your 808s like a little wobbly effect to them is what it's sounding like right now. You got a lot more control doing it this way. All right, let's go ahead and go back to the notes because now we're going to talk about how to make rolls. Perfect 808 rolls. Now, for me personally, I like to do my rolls in triplet grid. So you're going to right click on your grid and turn triplet grid on. What I like to do is turn on narrow and what narrow does is depending on how far you zoom in is how small the grid's going to become. That way you're not limited by 30 seconds. You can go to 64s or 128s. However far you want to zoom in, you can go. Now, what's what works best with the rolls is if you put them at the end of four or eight bars. That's where it always works really well. So you can see right here at the end of this four bars, I have this roll. And you can come up with some really cool stuff. I like to do something like this. Let's see how this sounds. Alright, so let's go ahead and put a roll at this section as well. Now, what can be really cool is if you get it super small like this right here, and we're just going to copy this over a bunch of times and we're going to mess with the velocity. So let's go ahead and pull our velocity dock up a little bit more and we can actually make them go upwards or you can make them go down as well too. But this gives a really cool effect when you have them get higher as they go. Alright, let's hear what this is sounding like. Sounds like a spaceship flying by. And maybe we go up an octave with this as well. Let's go ahead and turn the velocities back up and let's hear what we're doing. And one thing that's become super popular lately is the end, it would just keep rolling. So for instance, maybe we do this over and over again a couple times 
And what you can do is you can pair a snare or a clap with it and it sounds really amazing at the same time. And we're gonna pull this back a little bit more. Let's go ahead and bring everything over. We wanna have a lot of room to do this. Now I'll do the snares really quick so you can hear what it sounds like playing together, but you get the idea. <laughs> 